Dhammai Galo Gai of Yahweh Lelion Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inerrant great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh, Sith Kenu, to the highest. And peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. To such great Lord our God, who was, who is, and who will be, as the scripture concludes, before the daylight. The unique verse in the entire Bible, where the entire host of angels appearing in Luke 13 to understand that suddenly there was with angel a multitude of heavenly host praising Lord and saying, Glory to Lord our God in the highest and on the earth peace. Those who do the good will of Lord our God toward men, to, the, to those who perform that good will towards these great men who believe in Christ. This entire angelic host once appeared in the history which can never happen again. It would be better for the people rather than having their discourses to look, to seek, to search their salvation in other gods. At least to believe this great verse, unique verse in the entire Bible to teach them how the incident happened in the heavenly realm, to show forth the entire host of angels saluting my Lord, to look and to understand, peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, by faith alone, in Christ alone, demanding to understand that glory to the Lord our God to be to the highest, because His name alone is holy. And since he is benign, he has made us to be holy in the image of him. And the song which has been sung by the Dola servants of the Lord of a God, saying that he is Magala Kai Thomasta, great and marvelous, the works erga of the Lord who is Othias, O Pantocrator, who is just and true, Dikaias, Kai Alatenias, always the hard eyes of him, who is the King of the Holy Ones, and such great O Lord our God, who shall not fear, who shall not glorify him, and teaching to us that he alone is Hosias 3741 in comparison to what we read yesterday that we have been made 3742. So that all nations shall arrive and worship before him because of his Dikayo Mate, just effects, just awards, which will be made manifested. To such great Lord our God be the glory to the highest. When the entire angelic host saluted the birth of my Christ, giving the salutation to say, Glory to the Lord our God to the highest. Demanding in our lives today in the present Christendom to walk in truth and making to be constantly in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Making our minds to understand, to redeem the time because we need to walk 
with wisdom among them who do not have this great wisdom of the infallible and inherent word of the Lord of God as our only treasure. For that cause, dear brethren, every day biblical teaching is mandated in the Bible. The things which have been written and kept for us in the original languages of the scriptures, they have been recorded and kept so that you can understand them. The translations in the new, in the, in the new scope field, particularly for Isaiah passage number 37. Instead of urine and piss or urine and excreta, they are translated into refuse and water. Those things which are not needed for us. First of all, the KJV has left out many of the original words to teach, rather than giving another thousand words of explanation to teach the symbol of that. For example, in Isaiah 64, 6, the filthy rags are not been found. In the original, in the original Hebrew, it says for us, ministrous cloth. Now these people, they have developed the new Schofield Bible with a bunch of editors calling it to be water and refuse rather than urine and shit or to call for you the things of human excreta. Why these things are greater problem for us in our pulpits today? The sole reason is they are happy to be called as anathema, cursed ones rather than the blessed ones who do the work of the Lord of our God to whom our Lord of our God graciously granted the one more pound, the one who had ten pounds who built upon another ten pounds. The one who knows praso, the practice of it, the one who knows the diligent work of it, the one who knows how to honor the word of the Lord of our God. To them alone the one more pound was being given so that he could get back. The others asked he's having ten, why you are not able to give to the other five, the one who is having five. But our Lord of God concluded, to whom much is given, much is expected from us. Keeping that in mind in the church age, it will be a great fatal error for us. If we are not able to seek and search and do the will of Lord God the Father, walking consistently in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit. It will be the fate of us if we don't walk in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit as Proverbs 11 and 22 teaches to us. As a gold ring which has been put upon the sound of a pig. So is the adoration for a woman who doesn't have proper decision. The one who doesn't have proper reasoning, proper intelligence. That should not become the fate of the present church age, though much is given for us, much is expected from us. The meaning what I meant to say for you, dear brethren, without having proper intelligence in this church age, what you are, what is your work, we have been called to show forth to these people who are blind and deaf as witnesses of the Lord of a God. What have been called to show forth? The sacrifices of shouting rather than the sacrifices of peace offerings or meat offerings, as we read yesterday in Jeremiah 33 in verse number 18. The great things what we read there, when the right work of the pastor teacher has been done, the place will be called as a land of righteousness. And since when you're walking rightly in the work of the Lord of a God, not sinning, not grieving, not squelching, not deceiving, not lying. Though the passage may refer to the millennium, we are applying the principle to the present church age to understand what we are, what we possess and enjoy, the millennium people also cannot enjoy. That's the great privilege, what a believers we have in Christ. We are enjoying something far greater, the indwelling trinity of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, Lord God the Father, and Lord God the Son in us. We are not waiting for the ecstatic moments. Fulfilling the passage of Joel 2.28. We have been living in the terms pertaining to the dynamics of Bible doctrine. Which has to be very clearly, plainly thought in your own language, which you are trying to do. Not impressing with our vocabulary but telling to you all what is there in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic so that we are answerable to the Lord of our God and not to you. We love to raise the standards of teaching but not lower the standards of teaching. 
lowering what they have made the Bible into translation, lowering what they have caused the Bible into so many errors, what the people are walking now in the terms of this world. It is as simple as Proverbs 11, 22 being fulfilled in their lives as the way our Lord of our God makes Solomon to write long back teaching them. If you don't have a decision woman, what will be your fate? Keeping the same things, he says in Proverbs chapter 30, verses 5 and 6, staying to the point, nothing you shall add to it and nothing you shall take from it. So he says, as a jewel of gold to the swine's snout, so is a fair woman, beautiful woman, which is without decision. The Hebrew word taham, which is called for taste, judgment, decision, decree which is nothing but intelligence or behavior which could be according to the understanding of the word of the Lord of our God. And he says, the one who doesn't have the taste or perceive to eat, what it is that you need to look upon in this great and unique dispensation of the church age, the woman compared to Lord's wife in the future. And though you have been made fair among all the lilies, the Hebrew word for fair, is yape beautiful which could be called as that which is pleasant the cal stem to beautiful in the hip field stem to beautify oneself and to make the application to be beautiful these things which have been so great and important for us to learn in this church age dear brethren which demands for us so is a fair beautiful woman which is without having that word called as taham t-a-h-a-m who doesn't have that intelligence who doesn't have that great perceive of taste what it could mean in the presence of the lord of a god though the church age has been given much and expected much yet not walking in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit has been compared to a woman without desertion so he says, as a jewel that is nezem, the nose ring, the ear ring, which could mean a jewel of gold, zahab, which is of a precious metal, which is having brilliance and splendor in it. He's comparing directly the gold. He's not even comparing to silver or precious stones. A jewel of gold in swine. Kazir, which is nothing but swine, snout, which is nose or nostrils. And then he calls as a jewel of gold in swine snout. The reason why I'm telling about this Proverbs 11 22, dear brethren, Christ our Lord of our God says, do not show or pour down your precious pearls before swine or dogs is that the fate for us in the present christendom so much of valuable teachings are there for us to learn and to walk with wisdom who do not have the wisdom among them to fill out those blind and ear or blind and deaf ear ones not knowing the truth Asking them to assemble, asking them to gather all the nations together and produce the staunch arguments against my Lord and proving through the word of the Lord of our God that they are still blind and deaf till they could believe in my Christ and know the right path, the right track. Yet is a fair woman, beautiful woman, without desertion. Is that the church today? Because... Though we have been constantly mandated to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. To peripeta or in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Not only just to walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, but march. Galatians 5.25 Stir I can in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Demanded for us to walk in the sphere of love, to walk in the sphere of light, to walk in the sphere of doctrine, 3 John 3. Walking in the sphere like prisoners, worthy of our calling, Ephesians 4 1. Yet you haven't even dared to listen the song of the bond slaves. Far less you can become the Desmias, prisoners of my Christ. 
the great things where you haven't failed. You think in your life, paying tithes, coming to church, weekly ones. Thinking what our Lord our God has done for us is not far better than the Israelites. And we're thinking that without us, there will be no perfection of the millennium. So we have been here over here to look upon the Lord's plan and to be as the just objects of Him. Not able to realize that we are the workmen of His grace. We are the witnesses of His truth. What we have is far better than what the people can ever understand in the past or in the future. And every word of us to be seasoned with salt, says Colossians 4, 6. Whenever we open up our mouth, are we talking doctrine? Whenever we are reasoning, are we able to turn many people from their error and call them to be in the proper reproving work? That's what 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. To correct, to reprove, to rebuke. And to train them up and to instruct them up in the right word of the Lord of our God. Are we able to do it? The reason is, we love to keep one step in the world and one step in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. That's why we find a very great example when Christ our Lord of God said, Get behind me, Satan, to Peter. Because Peter took my Christ aside and began to rebuke him. The Greek word meant to say for us to seriously warn. The Lord of God said, Get behind me, Satan. The reason why we are talking about this Though we have been given much and expected much and to witness the truth without having any doubt in your mind that what we are talking is of light and Christ as Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul has been made to write in Galatians 1.10, this I certify in the Lord. Anyone who goes to other gospel, anyone who goes to other rule apart from the rule being set for them, that them be accused, two times uses the word. This great teachings which have been given for us, recorded and kept for us in eternity past, is to edify us so that we shall no longer walk as these people walk without redeeming their time. Therefore, in Galatians 1.9, when we come back, we can look, dear brethren, very strongly. In verse number 8, he says, Though we or any other angel from heaven preach to you any other gospel unto you than which we have preached unto you, let him be for the first time anathema. And he says, As we said before, so say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you other than what you have received, second time he gives us a wash caution of warning, let them be anathema. And then he says, For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? If I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of the Lord. Again, here he uses the word called as Dallas, the slave. Then he says, But I certify you no razor, making known. The same thing what he prayed for us in John 17, 26 by Christ. I have making known and I have made known for them the truth. So he says, I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. Can we say that? Here he's talking about the gospel coming to the mystery epistles. He talks about the doctrine, the use of your spiritual life. So he says in verse number 12 of Galatians 1, For I neither received it of any man, neither I was thought of it, but I have been given only by the revolution of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That meant to say what? There are men and there are men who will teach to you the precepts of men, the teachings of their denominations. If ever you ask, the only denomination name which we have to maintain should be Exegiomai in our pulpits. It is not the brethren, the Pentecostal, the Baptist or XYZ reasons what they can go through. The only denomination which has to be, it has to be Exegiomai because what we preach, we certify in the Lord. Stating to the point, if we were here to please men, we wouldn't have been the slaves of the Lord of God. And Lord God is the witness for the truth, what we are communicating for them. And that's what he says. That's what we preach. 
There is no other way for it to edify apart from the word of the Lord of God to understand the difference between the philos love and the agape love. Agape love, the demands of the word of the Lord of God, the philos love, when you edify in the work of the word of the Lord of God day by day, renovating the standards of your thinking, then you have been there in a place to accept and to prove your philos love because you have been edified now. And in order to edify, you need to walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. If not, though much has been given for us in the church age, under equal privilege and equal opportunity, the terms pertaining to the church age, what we can talk about, though much has been given and much has been expected, so that we can call those who are blind, though they have eyes, we can call those who are deaf, though they have ears, because to reason and to discern and to teach them what is the truth. And when we expound them the truth, they will be our witnesses to say, yes, this is the only truth. They should accept what is the truth in reply to the Pontius Pilate question when he asked my Lord in John 18.38, What is the truth? He held his peace. Long back he said in Isaiah 43.8, We will be the people for those blind and deaf men who are blind and deaf. No ear can understand, no eye can perceive, no heart can realize. That's what we read in 1 Corinthians 2, 7 through 16. Because they haven't understood what is the spiritual phenomena. Because they haven't been born again. Those who have been born again, they can understand the spiritual phenomena of Bible doctrine. Those who haven't born again, what they are, they are either the flesh or the soul. Sukikas or Sarkikas, they are carnal minded. Carnal minded people cannot understand. Thus we have a rebuke over here to understand and to listen. Though we are believers in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, even after believing in the Lord, we do walk in the flesh. And we walk in the flesh to say, Lord, you cannot do this, Lord, you cannot do that. And we don't wait upon or cling upon the promises of the Lord of a God. That's what faith is. Faith is to cling upon, to walk upon, and to lean upon His promises. And what are His promises? If he has called us to be his witnesses, if he has called us to realize that no longer we are here to give the sacrifice for any longer for sin, but rather we are here to give the sacrifices of shouting of the glorious grace of the Lord of our God and shouting in the sense not like this one minister by name called as Rambabu who makes himself to be a minister who talks in my Karnataka. Let's worship our Lord of our God by shouting, not like that. Shouting that we have won over the things pertaining to our enemies. Our head is high, says Psalms 27 6. Singing the Psalms, making melody in our hearts, fulfilling Colossians 3 17 and 16. When the word of the Lord of our God could richly dwell in us, that is the point when we can make melody in our heart. The sacrifices of shouting is not what the Pentecostal crowds love to jump along and dance along in their, emotion, in their emotional ecstasy and think they are doing the shoutings of the Lord or they are doing the works of the Lord. We are not talking about that. We are talking something which is far away above than the people could realize when they are free from sin because they have been cleansed from sin and they have been called not to practice that sin any longer. But either by thought, word or deed you will fall. Even the twelve disciples... We're not having the doctrine like the way how that Mary the prostitute had. With all of her glory, she made the best host. And Lord of God said, Thy sins have been forgiven and no longer go in sin. But here we find a lesson from Peter. We find a lesson from Judas Iscariot. Yeah, Peter teaches for us what importance it is for us to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, because though he was in Christ, with Christ, rather looking upon my Christ, looking unto the world, he fell while walking on the water. So we need to learn from him. Christians still have the flesh in them, even though they are no longer in the flesh as to their standing before God. When Mary understood the things pertaining to the word of the Lord of a God, she was a faithful one till he could be on the cross. She was the first one to whom our Lord of a God appeared. She was the one who said, I will carry my master. They have stolen my master. Show me my master, gardener. I want to carry her. Do you know what a privilege it is for us when we have been totally changed to walk like Christ? 
why I'm telling to you all today about the importance of rebound, which we're covering every time to sanctify ourselves and look upon the wonders of the word of the Lord of our God. Because Christians are having to reside in the flesh, though they have been called not to have the dominion of the flesh upon your soul. Therefore, dear brethren, Christians still have the flesh in them, even though they are no longer in the flesh as to their positional truth before Lord of a God, Romans 8, 9. And if we are not walking in the Spirit by using the powers of our priesthood to rebound, and if you are not abiding in communion with Christ, certainly the flesh will inevitably manifest itself. That's why many are weak, sick until to the point of death. Why they are still weak, sick, until to the point of death. The flesh has been evidently manifested in their lives. Therefore, Colossians 3.5, Necrosate, put to death. The KJV translation leads you to call mortify. No longer it should be mortified, it should be put to death. Because we are in the church age with a greater purpose. We cannot have time to waste our energy thinking upon our sickness. We cannot have time to thinking upon the family affairs on this earth. Though it has been bona fide duty for you towards your family, towards your men, but number one priority always to be given for Christ. And everything you give the Lord of God, number one priority, it is the Lord of God who shall uphold you in His work. And how marvelously is going to clear your tracks. The tracks which have been taken by your own negative volition, the stumbling blocks. So, when the flesh is inevitably manifested, and this is no doubt the explanation for the often inconsistency in the walk of believers. Because one moment honoring the Lord and the next breath dishonoring Him, and that's why if you're not walking in the Spirit and abiding in communion, that's what we read, Galatians 5.15 and 5.16. Walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. The flesh warreth against the Spirit and the Spirit against the flesh. Always there is a constant battle between the both. So looking upon the Peter's example, we can look what this inconsistency of walk could result. Peter has confessed the Lord Jesus Christ to be the Son, the Christ, the Son of the Living Lord, Mark, Matthew 16, 16. And Lord of God said, Flesh and blood hath not revealed this to you, but the sovereign grace of the Heavenly Father. And then, because of this heaven-inspired confession, Peter is now pronounced blessed by the Lord himself. Shortly following this, Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer and be killed and be raised the third day. There, the Peter's reaction to the Lord's announcement of his impending crucifixion jumps out to us unexpectedly, as does the Lord Solomon's response to it. However, it is recorded for our learning that Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord. Lord, this shall not happen to you. Peter took him aside privately in order to give him a lecture. The word for rebuke means to seriously warn. If the Lord would die in such a manner, then all the Peter's hope to reign alongside of him in the kingdom would not come to pass. Peter's was, Peter was thinking more of himself than of the Lord and his purpose. How often this has been the case of Christians blending our plans, blending our thoughts, blending our agendas, and not able to seek the Lord God great test faith to be manifested therefore dear brethren every time whenever we come to learn the word of the Lord of our God not here to please men all the time take it into your mind we are not here to please men we are here to please our Lord of our God that's what we always say for you saying to the point we are not answerable to you but to the Lord of our God so we ask you to believe what has been told for you as Apostle Paul says no reason I certify you brethren that the gospel which has been taught he said but now the doctrine which has been taught is not after the men neither by the men who taught them it is pure by the apocalypti of Jesus Christus. If that time it was apocalypti, now as Joseph told, interpretation belonged to the Lord of God. In the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit who has written the scriptures, the Theonustas. When we have been given the scriptures to understand in the enlightenment of the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, we teach to you that we shall no longer go to give the sacrifices of sin, but rather the sacrifices of shouting and singing and praising the praises of the Lord of God because 
us. At every breath we trample Satan under our feet. That's what we have been manifested, says in 1 John 3, 8. We have been here to destroy the works of devil. We have been here, though it has been bounded and kept for a thousand years, in the millennium as well, there the people came along to worship the Lord our God. But again, the rebellion began. That's what we look in the terms pertaining to Jeremiah chapter 33 in verse number 14 through 18. What we look once again, though there is a branch of righteousness through David, the people love not to obey the Lord. But he says, if you would make the Lord of our God to be our righteousness, he says, if you have been walking in the new man made after the image of the Lord of our God, which is then for sure you will truly understand the greatest and the the greatest purpose of all time which is that to see sin shall no longer have dominion or authority over you why it is sin for you dear brethren purely you are anathema the cursed ones we shall look upon that after this word of prayer infinitely divine holy father as we're going to study these things we pray Lord God the Holy Spirit challenge and bless us by this message in Christ's name we pray father the reason for sanctification and to get along to look upon the wonders of the word of the Lord of God through rebound we have read in Matthew chapter 16 though Peter was a man being not revealed by the flesh and blood but by the Spirit of the Lord of God yet he made his own decisions to walk in the flesh. That's what the inconsistency walk will lead men to fall. But we are no longer here to walk inconsistently. We have been said breath by breath, be filled with the Spirit. Moment by moment, the exposition of the word of the Lord our God, Zephaniah 3, 4 and 5. Because of the violation of the right teaching, because of the conspiracy of the pastors of not teaching the right word, what we have been covering our subject, the people who are not able to make up their teachings to stand and make you to be the witness of the truth we are here to teach to you the revolution what we are teaching to you is not of men or not being taught of men but by Christ of Lord of our God to inculcate into your minds from the original language of the scriptures so it is as it is that's the word meant to say amen which has been called for us to realize amen so be it so it is because in the original language of the scriptures if our Lord of our God intended those things to abide there with such great consistency in the when the original words then it is our duty to expound to you word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept, so that we could walk with them who do not have this wisdom. Therefore it says, walk in wisdom towards them that are without, for the reason is redeeming the time. The kairos which you have to purchase, the kairos moments in the chronological time, because Lord of a God is near. Your moderation should be made known, says Philippians 4, 5, because O Kurias Agas, the Lord of a God is near. So what is your witness, though you have been staying over here for a short span of time you do not know when is the rapture of the church but have you been prepared don't think you can enjoy to look upon the things pertaining to you a fourth generation or fifth generation not at all you have to be prepared day by day moment by moment that's what we are asking you to be in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit what is there in this world you will find in first first John chapter 2 verses 15 through 16 to teach the epithumai of the flesh the epithumai of the eye and the background brogadakai of your life which is not which is not Jao life but Bios life but the one who does the will of Lord God the Father that alone will abide what is the will of Lord God the Father it is to see none to perish but everyone should come to the thorough knowledge of the word of the Lord our God the thorough knowledge the epinosis knowledge and that's the duty of the pastor teacher to train you up to become the epinosis knowledge of his word and why we have to become the epinosis knowledge of his word because the world has been filled with blind and deaf men though they have eyes and though they have ears the great exhortation what Christ our Lord of our God writes for us to understand the great things in Isaiah chapter 48 and going on to chapter 43 going on from verse number 8 and teaching to us what we have to be in the Lord these great things are so much essential for us to understand we cannot let go the word of the Lord of our God in the terms pertaining to the interpretation of men being taught by men or the commentaries what the men write we are here to teach to you as Lord God the Holy Spirit leads us in the original language of the scriptures 
and concluding them to the present church age and concluding them how we the believers are superior and being made after the image of the Lord of our God not to walk like the Gentiles walk who walk in the vanity of their mind but to walk by Christ to look upon the new man put upon the new man and learn upon the new man so he says in verse number 7 of Isaiah 43 everyone that is called by my name for I have created him for my glory I have formed him yet I have made him and he says bring forth the blind people that have eyes and the deaf that have ears who are these these are the unbelievers who haven't known my Christ who are reasoning in the standards of this world now in the rationalism and empiricism who by the things pertaining to satan being blinded their eyes not able to look upon the simple gospel which is in christ therefore apostle paul says in second corinthians 11 3 the way it have has beguiled eve lest it should not beguile you the simplicity which has been found in christ that's what he says again and again be aware about the cunning fables of be aware about the cunning fables of Satan and not to be ignorant about it so that you should be thoroughly prepared. You know what a great things of a lot of our God writes and kept for us. We have something great and unique. We cannot be the blind and deaf. If ever you are blind, it is purely because of your ignorance and arrogance to grow up in grace and to become like the Bereans who were daily cross-checking the word of the Lord of God which was being taught for them and they went home to cross-check and look whether those teachings are of the same or not. And that's what, dear brethren, the right duty of the pastor teacher plays into role. And Lord our God has kept for us on this earth to witness, witness, witness the truth, what it is as it is. Not to alter it like the way how the new Schofield Bible is all about. Refuse and water rather than excreta and urine. Dear brethren, why we are here, the things pertaining to the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher and the things pertaining to every believer in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because they are effective ambassadors to the Lord. They have to be if they aren't. Since they are listening to another gospel, since they are listening to another doctrines which is in not in accord with the right word of the Lord of our God. Being taught by the so-called false pastor teachers for the entertaining clouds making themselves to be the reverends, right reverends and elders of the church, who doesn't even know the fear of the Lord of our God, neither the word of the Lord of our God to be honored in their pulpits, who constantly beg for tithes, who constantly run their show to impress men and not Lord of our God. That's what Apostle Paul says in Galatians 1.10. If I were here to please the men rather than Lord of our God, I wouldn't have been the bond slave of my Christ. Since many men who are not able to realize this simple truth in the word of the Lord of our God, they have become slaves to men. They have become slaves to their bellies. Just for some pieces of bread or for some handful of barley. They have exchanged the truth for lies. At one end, the world professing to be wise became fools. On the other end, the earth which is going on, the Christendom, as we read in Proverbs 11 22. <laughs> Gold ring in the swine's nostrils, so it is a fair woman, a beautiful woman, that is what the church, who doesn't have the desertion. Dear brethren, in James 5 19, we have, if any one of you do error, that is what plana o. The Greek word is to lead astray, to lead astray from the right path. Metaphorically, it has been called for us to lead away from the truth, to lead into error, to deceive, to be led into error, to be led aside from the path of virtue, and to go astray into sin, to serve or fall away from the truth, like the heretics. Present Christendom denominations could be called as heretics denominations. If it has been truly the exegeomite denominations in our pulpits, then the heretics denominations would have long back closed their business. But they're having the privacy and the evolution of them for the freedom. So whatever they talk, whatever they come into their mind, it is for them. And who's there to stop? If, ever go, if anyone goes to oppose them and live apart from the fellowship as Romans 16, 17 teaches to us, 
If anyone doesn't follow this rule, get out from them. These are the men who would come and teach to you. He is a heretic, he is a cult. Though a lot of God says in Luke chapter 10, for my name's sake, if anyone calls you the cult, be happy. And it is better for us always to be alone and single than to be in a false company where the people do not know what is the truth. Where the people do not seek what is the truth. Because we are answerable to the Lord of our God and not to this man. Therefore he says, this I certify, no reason. This I declare to you again and again in Galatians 1.11. The gospel what I have taught to you is not of an angel or not of man, nor being taught of man. It is purely by the revolution of the word of the Lord our God. So it is what we are teaching to you word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept, by the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher to teach and to abide in truth. How many days more you want to be in plan now to be led astray from the truth and to enter into errors? If the word says no tithes, no tithes. If the word says no woman preacher, no woman preacher. If the word says if we can truly understand the bona fide work of the pastor teacher, the copulative conjunction chi, which is pastor, wife and teachers. And teacher has been represented by the Lord of a God. He's representing the Lord in his teaching field. Then simply obey it. Why do you want to play gimmicks to call your brethren? Why do you want to play the gimmicks to call your reverence? Where the word in the, in the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher has been given for you to be called as reverence? A right reverence, a dear or doctor, so and so. How many days more you want to live a life of astray, led away from the truth? How many days more do you want to add something to the Lord's word and delete the essence of the Lord's word into your translations? Remember, the Lord of a God will file a case against you. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 6, in comparison to Micah 6. The Akak, what we read. The Akak has been taken care by those where our Lord of a God will put them and he calls them as liars. Kazav, K A Z A V. Who make white black and black white. But with the Lord of a God, let him be a humble one. Let him not have any name and fame on this earth. Yet if he honors his word, the truth as is found in Christ, he makes the disciples. And if he goes to teach them as it is in the Lord, though the people recognize him or not, Lord of a God's born slave he is and his promotion will be to go to be the prisoner for the Lord. What men think, whether men follow, whether men listen in the YouTube, whether the men understand this or not, as much as lucid we can give in expounding to you word upon word and teaching to you the purpose of making the sacrifices of great singing and praises of shouting in the presence of the Lord of our God because we have overcome our enemy our head is above our enemies and we have trampled Satan under our feet breath by breath fulfilling Romans 16 20 and destroying the works of the devil says 1 John 3 8 then yet why is it to want to make white black and black white the heretics denominations are more today rather than the exegeomite denominations which could teach rightly the word of the Lord of God. Christ our Lord of God himself in John 18 exemplified the truth and the importance of what we can call as exegeomite. No man has seen Lord God the Father but apart from him who came from the bosom of the Lord of God. And what does he do? He exegeomites. If our denominations would have been exegeomai denominations and every pastor teacher like that Yale, Howard and Dartmouth universities begin with the intention and the mission in life to train and send those missionaries or having the bona fide gift of the pastor teachers to the entire world to go and inculcate the word because word alone is enough for us to change our thinking. A physical doctor is there to set right the anatomy of the body in the chemical reactions. 
But the doctor of the law, which is nothing but the word of the Lord of God, has been there here to set right your entire life so that the physical doctor is also not needed when you walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, obeying his word breath by breath and not grieving and squelching, nor deceiving, nor waxing, Lord God, the Holy Spirit in you. The people in the time of the trouble, they seek the Lord. <laughs> Doesn't he say for things pertaining to the book of Jeremiah, though Moses and Samuel pray it, I will not listen for these people. The hardness and the conspiracy what the shepherds have conducted. The way how they have violated my truth. Fed them with sherets of teachings called as chaff rather than wheat. having not given them the right word, yet they came to say the right word and they thought they have the bona fide gift and they ran into the ministry which are nothing but the morons, infidels. Sometimes it takes our time to think. If Lord of God called them Raka and he says, even you are liable for that curse. If he called them morons, that the biblical terms goes to prove for us kleptes, lustes, misthotes, stupas, canapes, tiflos, and shoras oriented minded pastors who have become kazavs in the present Christendom. Though they have such high esteemed name, renowned name, not able to teach the word every day, word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept. Not able to train them up in the standards of the right word of the Lord of God, making them disciples. The work which says in Colossians 1, 24 through 29. For the answer of the Lord of God, he said, in Isaiah 43, 9, they will hear and understand that this is truth. This is a myth. So he says, bring forth that are blind, bring forth that are deaf. That's our reasoning. Let's make them to realize what is the truth. When Pontius Pilate could ask the question, what is the truth? He held his peace of the Lord of our God so that we, the church, will speak what is the truth. Therefore, he says in John 17, 6, they have kept, kept, kept past tense. He has such a great confidence on every believer that they will keep his word. He says, no, he says they have kept my word. What a privilege it is that he believes us so much. Doesn't it break your hearts? The Lord our God who trusted and gave us his mind to witness his truth. Yet we walk inconsistently in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and grievance, quilt, and deceive, and wax. And we make our lives to be proud enough to say, Lord, we are doing their work. Like the way how Micah 3.11 crowd says, Is not the Lord our God with us, though we teach for hire, though we teach for the things pertaining to our wages? Remember, dear brethren, the very next verse in Micah 4 9 of the same chapter, of the next chapter. Until and unless the birth pangs taken care by the bona fide gifted pastor teacher producing in you the character of Christ, because we share his righteousness, we share his sonship, we share his heirship, and we share his destiny. That's why we are predestined to conform to the image of his dear beloved Son. Until and unless that has been formed in you, the labor of the pastor teacher has been in vain. Because of the Lord of God trusts us so much. Thus he has given us his mind to communicate. A physical doctor is enough for you to set right the physical anatomy. But you have been given far greater when he calls the desolate places to be made once again. He calls them the shepherds, says Jeremiah 33 verses 12 and 13. The one who counts, the one who thana, the one who makes them disciples as it has been said in Isaiah chapter 8 verses 11 through 21, the great verse 11 through 17, what you can call. What is your duty? Go on and teach them and make them disciples, disciples, disciples. The same thing of a great commission, what our Lord of God says in Matthew 28, 18 through 20. First, make them disciples. Let them then go and preach the gospel to the entire world. Making them disciples is the order for which we have been set apart for the Lord's work. But yet our Lord of God calls in James 5, 19, brethren, which is nothing but those who belong to the following work of Christ if any of you do error by that we meant to say what there is no chance that a brethren can do error 
But since they have the all sin nature like unbelievers as well in them, so they do error. Because we have been said when we walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, we shall not fulfill the, fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Then how we can error? It is purely because we do not know what is the truth. So we error and we grieve and squelch. And since we take in the elements of the Lord of our God and not partake in his work, that's why many are weak, sick and till to the point of death, says the scripture. And that's a fatal error. The fatal error which has changed for you not to partake daily, it has made for you to weekly once and in some churches monthly once and in some churches yearly once. And daily if you are being mindful of the work of the Lord of God, that is to catalogio, to go and preach about the word of the Lord of God to them who are perishing about my Christ through a holy manner walk of life at least, so that constantly you should be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. If you fail in there, then definitely you are simply partaking in the elements of the Lord of a God, which is for your greater curse. That's what have you error. The word says daily carry your cross and become the disciples of the word of the Lord of a God. If you don't carry your cross, then you are error. You are becoming an heretic. You are becoming a plano. You are being becoming to devoid from the truth. That's what the Matayotis are all about. They are devoid of truth and they are devoid of appropriateness. Though they have been saints, they make their lives to be like a hell of a sin and call them themselves as still sinners, though sanctified and kept apart in Christ for the great work after the image of the Lord of God, demanding to put out the old man and put on the new man, and you ask, hey, which is to slip in, which is to wear in. You are not the old one any longer. Why do you want to go and taste like the dogs who go, to back, who go back to their own vomit? And this things, what we are teaching to you, it shouldn't be like the way the precious things put upon the, before the pigs, the pearls before the pigs. Already, our Lord of God says, a fair woman without desertion is like a swine having a gold ring in its snout. And I'm afraid where the simplicity word has been found in Christ with Apostle Paul, the same things we are repeating again back after 2000 years. Like a chest virgin which has to be exposed to the Lord of a God, you require someone again to warn you. That's the real work of the pastor teacher to warn you, Pyman, Bosco Pyman. Why we warn you? Because you are errors. You are not walking in the sphere of truth, 3 John 3. You are not walking in the sphere of light, Ephesians 5 a. And you are not walking in the sphere of a great one, Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Galatians 5.16 It is not just to walk, but march. Therefore, he says very spe specifically, brethren, those people who belong to Christ, where there is no way of any sin. That's why we have been called as brethren. And what is the point of sin in your life? Going against the word of the Lord of God is sin. But the class of believers, when the word of the Lord of God calls them as Adolfois, as brethren, it meant to say they are out from sin. Because they have been sanctified and kept apart in Christ. What we read yesterday, if in Revelation 15.4, 3741 code has been used because thou alone are holy, O Lord. He uses the same hosietes for us in Ephesians 4 24 to ask that we are 3742. In 3741, he's undefiled of the sin, he's pure from the sin. 3742, we have been cleansed from the sin by believing in Christ. That's what he meant to say the word brethren. And the Greek word goes to teach for us, taking the notes from Spira Zodiotos Bible. Because as much as we can, we have to expound to you the truth. And today should be for you to realize the meaning of brethren. It has been taken from A and Delphas, a womb, a brother. And it has been equivalent word for the Hebrew one, which is being used for more distant relatives. And because of that, something that the circumstances ought to be taken into consideration, where brothers and sisters of the Lord Jesus Christ have been referred. Adelphos denotes in general a comrade based on common origin, that is, a members of the same tribe, a countryman. A neighbor has been regarded as a brother. Adelphos also came to designate a community of love based upon the 
commonality of believers due to Christ Lord's work on the cross. Commonality, not criminality. Commonality of Christ's work. And we all come into one thing. That's what we share in one baptism of the Spirit. <laughs> and dear brethren, we know very well. The men on this earth will seek. If man could be reverent, why can't his wife also could be reverent? Why can't she do the things? As we were reading in Genesis 7, 1, 2 and 3. The 7 to 7 code. There, seven male and seven female clean birds. Two male and two female unclean birds. Why these things have been recorded there? Because the people will come to say, we are having the commonality in Christ's work. Let us also preach. Let us also do. No, not at all. A woman can never have authority over the man to preach in the pulpits. That's a great blasphemous work. Though they may have commonality in sharing the Spirit of Christ. Galatians 3, 26 and 27. The 7 to 7 code expounding over there, male and female, to be more specific. The 7 clean birds, male and female, it meant to say for you, dear brethren, getting into the assembly of the Lord our God to give your life as a living sacrifice to Christ, the one whom to, to whom you are getting married, the residue of your breath, if you are a male and if she is a female, if she thinks she can carry the work like the way how you can carry, let her kneel down and read the Bible seven times. Then both are having the same burden. The two unclean, what we have been talking about, the animals. Sliving the beer, sliving the lion, let them both of them do. First time sliving the beer, the things pertaining to the translations, what they have read. Sliving the lion in the interlinear of Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. And the seven clean animals or beasts. If the man goes to write seven times in the Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic, let her the female also write the seven times. And if she can do, it will be a great job. That's what Lord of God calls as a corporate witness in the assembly of the Lord. But though you have been given equal privilege and equal opportunity, that doesn't mean that you can stand in the pulpit and preach and have authority over the man. The greater you understand the word of the Lord of God, the greater it will be for you to realize it is better for us to be saved in the birth pangs rather than going against the word of the Lord of God and preaching towards the men to think that we are reverence and we have the authority. That's the criminality, not commonality of Christ's work. And you may think because of the work of my Christ which is due unto me, I can go and preach. Not at all, dear brethren. Be free from such standards, brother and men to say, being set apart, who cannot sin. And therefore, based on the Christ work, you have the equal privilege. And Jesus speaks of his brethren, which is nothing but the members of the same Christian community who are called as brethren to do and to be taught to become the disciples of the word of the Lord our God. Therefore, he writes in James 5, 19, Adelphos, brothers, and the word for us to be more specific, dear brethren, which have the same national ancestor belonging to the same people or countrymen or having the same parents. So the adult force meant to say for us, if Christ our Lord of God is our brother and we have the sperm of Christ, that's what he says in 1 John 3, 9, then we need to be there in the work of Christ as Ephesians 1, 4 through 6 teaches to us that before the foundation of the world, he has called us to be holy and blameless. And in Colossians 1, 18, he says, when we stand beside him to be agnaketas, which is to be pure from within and without. So that when inner man is true, the outward man also could be true. Thus we can call we belong to one family. That's why we can be free from sin. Therefore we can find anyone where those who have exalted to the same heavenly place of Christ that is called as Christians. If any of you and if that is what the word called as Ian, the preposition which we can call used over here as a conjunction the conditional participle that is what which has been called for us to understand the indefiniteness or uncertainty that's what you alone can search yourself whether you sin or not sin 
what the things of a man are are known to his heart to the spirit of that man Likewise, the things of the Lord of a God are been known to the Holy Spirit of the Lord of a God, says the scripture. Likewise, what you are, what you think, what you aren't, it is known only to you. It cannot be known to us. So the point over here is, dear brethren, like the way Elisha thought of Gehazi, because the man who is in sin, we could say easily if they are away from the word of the Lord of God. Doesn't my heart was with you when you were doing these things? Because the word will be into the mouth of the pastor teacher. So he says, the revelation not by man, but by the Lord of God, he says, and teaches to you, if, and can't we find them whether they are sinning or not? If they are not sinning, then they would make every day the right work of the pastor teacher in our pulpits. They wouldn't love to seek denominations and think we are having great denominations, we are having great many people to watch us, great many people to follow us. Who cares? The world may be happy to follow and to seek those things, but the word of the Lord of our God never. No matter what our great you may think, the word of the Lord of our God can never. And the bona fide gift of the pastor teachers will never budge an inch or even to the dust of the feet to say, that with their lives they are going to dishonor the word of the Lord of our God. Not at all. When the Lord of our God has trusted and given us his mind. How we can dishonor him. How we can walk like the Gentiles who walk when the word of the Lord of our God says this I testify in the Lord of our God and you shall not walk like the Gentiles who walk in the vanity of their mind. How we can walk any longer in the vanity of our mind like the Gentiles by not having doctrine. That's why the Philos love is greater than the Agape love. Do you know why? Because the Philos love demands to change the facets of your soul from human viewpoint to divine viewpoint and that demands day by day carrying your cross, striving for the mastery, making your flesh in control to crucify it, to learn the word of the Lord of our God and though we have been in God's time in the spirit we cannot make the flesh to be there yet we are living as if the flesh is reigning over us so the philos love is great and it demands time and preparation for you to become like the word of the Lord of God what the agape love demands is what the philos has to fulfill and that's what we have to make it we have to do it to the verification complex of our soul so here it says if and the participle meant to say the uncertainties were the indefiniteness of you. And you alone know whether you're grieving and squelching or deceiving and not walking in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. How could I know? Because you may pretend. But in the light of the word of the Lord of our God, we could say, when you're not coming every day to Bible class, when you're not looking upon the right word of the Lord of our God, we could say very well, you are not walking in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, or being filled with the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which is prayer, or, oh, but rather in return you are grieving and squelching and deceiving the indwelling Trinity in you. You're deceiving your own self. When you're deceiving your own self, remember you're deceiving Lord God, the Father in heaven. That will be a very great pain for you. Because now you are the temple of the Lord our God being bought with a great price. You can never walk like the Gentiles walk. You are dead to the world. Though you have been kept alive in the world, you are kept alive only for to witness the truth. And you don't have any other reason for you apart from witnessing the truth. So the word says, brethren, if any of you do error, again the Greek word plana, which is nothing but straying away or led away from the truth and getting into error. And what is that error? Dear brethren, anything which is contrary to the mind of Christ is error. Do you think Antichrist will come in the future? Antichrist have already begun in our standards. What is Antichrist instead of Christ? What it has been found? That is Antichrist. 
instead of the right word of the Lord our God to make you the disciple so that the blind and the deaf and they could come and assemble with the staunch arguments we can prove them what is the truth in the word of the Lord our God being expounded for us through the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit in its interpretation not in tongues or visions or dreams but by the plain word of the Lord the plain word of the Lord of our God in its verbal inspiration of the scriptures being teaching to them in the original languages of Hebrew Greek and Aramaic when we are here to expound to you the truth, when we are here to teach the truth, when we are here to tell what is the truth, making them to understand what it is. That's how we tell them that we are not Antichrist. We are here to tell what the Lord of God has established as a principle once again to put the same rule in our pulpits. Romans chapter 16 verse 17, what Apostle Paul said. And Lord of God says in Philippians 2, if there is any other rule, Lord of God will let us know. But you know very well, there is no other rule apart from this only rule given for us to make you disciples. He writes the principle in Ephesians 4. Manthano plus Didasco, once again. In verse number 20 and 21, the two, Greek, the two Greek equivalent words which are equivalent to one equivalent word of Hebrew called as Lama. Right from the beginning in, Ephi, in Deuteronomy 4.2, make them disciples, Lama. The same thing he repeats again in Ephesians 4, 12 and 13. Manthano plus Didasco, make them disciples. Again, making them the Lama of the Hebrew word. Looking upon the time, you should be the communicators of the word of the Lord of God, but you don't even budge an inch to understand what is in the Bible, what is the origin of the Bible, what are the languages of the Bible, where they have been translated into us for us. And the Greek which you have taken from the Septuagint, which is nothing but Koine, common Greek. So that all the people can truly understand in the common terms what we are able to talk. And dear brethren, there are people who love to use great vocabulary and to impress others. But we are here not. When Lord God, the Holy Spirit, uses common language, Koine language, Koine Greek, which is common for all the people, the best what we can delineate, the best what we can make it lucid and teach to you, we are able to do it. Which is not our will, but by the will of Lord God, the Father, according to His work working in us. So that every believer should wake up and come back and carry their cross and become the disciples day by day to learn the word when they have been taught under the principle of Lama, which is nothing but Manthano plus Didasco, the right bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teacher. And the word says, brethren, if anyone goes to error, or if any one of you do error from where? Apo, which is nothing but the source of suppression from the truth, Aletheia. And the new man which has been asked to renew in the spirit of our mind, that is nothing but the breathing of the process in our thinking, which is from not the meta schematizoans, which will go only change the outward appearance and love to follow the flow of the world. But from the inward transformation, inward renovation of your thinking, that is metamorphomai, which is so much important for us. And this metamorphomai is what the Bible calls for us. And that is what he says, the breathing, breathing, breathing of your mind. Because in the sphere of truth, we have been made in the terms of his holiness and in the benignity of the truth, the truth, the truth. Dear brethren, wake up your mind to learn the truth every day. Do not let go to follow the lies of this world. Ask your pastors what is the truth. If Pontus Pilate could ask my Christ, he held his peace to know that we are the people who have been made for his glory, built for his glory, called for his glory. Moving from glory to glory, we'll answer what is the truth at every breath, like the way how Job did when he put on Christ. The very great passage says, I was been mouth to those who are not having mouth. I have been eyes to them who do not have eyes. I broke the jack, ja, jawbone of them who were against the word of the Lord of a God. I beat them into pieces, into powder. Says even in the things pertaining to David in his Psalms. The great things, the beautiful things, what the word of the Lord of God has given for us to put on Christ. 
and to witness to this world that what is truth, yet we are walking like those unbelievers, not realizing what is truth. So if any one of you do error from the truth, and the one who is of a spiritual one, that's what we read in 1 Corinthians 6. Are you not here to judge angels? Why is it that someone needs for you to be judged? And you go stand before the court matters of this law. So the one referring to the spiritual one, the mature one, that's what he says even in the terms pertaining to Galatians 5.1. The one who is spiritual, let him reproduce him back by standing fast in the liberty where with Christ our Lord of God has set us free. That's what in Galatians 6.1. Let him convert epistrapho to turn on, to cost to return, to bring back to the love and the obedience of the Lord of a God, to love for the children, to love wisdom and righteousness. And to come back and to convert, to revert the matter. And the one who convert him, let him know, that is, ginosko, to learn and to have knowledge of understanding, that he which can were that is epistrapho again to make him to learn wisdom and the knowledge of Bible doctrine because he has given him now the first warning discipline and though he is into the point of death intensified stage of discipline and asking him to come back and learn Bible doctrine do you know what does he do? the one who converted the one who he is now he is not a brethren but he is a sinner if he were a brethren he will not sin because he is having the sperm of Christ he will walk according to the work of Christ but now the Bible calls in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, what James writes for us. He says, now he is a sinner. And looking upon that point of view, though we have been made to be holy and blameless in the presence of the Lord our God, how many times we have been reckoned every day in the presence of the Lord our God by our enemy, that is nothing but Satan, to get into the court matter of case and say, he is a sinner, either by thought, word, or deed. Because of the propitiation work of Christ and the advocacy of the Lord of God, he says, Lord, I have already paid for him. Therefore, again, what does he do? He spanks you to get back into Christ. Suffering for blessing to be turned when you use rebound. Now it becomes the whole matter. So the first thing, what does he do? He calls you for warning, discipline, correct and obey the word of the Lord of God. If you don't learn that, he takes you till to the point of death and releases you. That is intensified stage of discipline. And even at that time, you don't come back to learn the word of the Lord of our God sinning to death. It's your own soul sinning against my Christ. And we cannot pray for sinner to death. So he says, the one who is now a sinner, harmartia, no, but it is harmartholas, the man to say, devoted to sin, who is not free from sin, who is preeminently sinful and has become wicked by grieving and squelching constantly. And specifically a man stained with certain definite vices and crimes. And the tax collectors were being used with that word called as the heathens go to sin as Harmatolas, who is a sinful sinner. Now you become devoted to sin by not coming to learn Christ. And he which converted the sinner from, again the word called as plena, which is called as wandering, straying about. And now, what is there? He is a mental straying. And what does the word say for us? He is into wrong opinion. He is relative to morals and religion. He has become error which show in itself in action and is leading to get himself decide of fraud. Here the word which have been used is 4106, but here we have have in verse number 19, 4105, divide of truth. The result of the divide of truth is 4106, <coughs> which has been called error of a wrong opinion. And the word meant to say, one led astray from the right way, roams here and thither, that is what going here and there, tossing for every slight of doctrine like a wind, and the one what he comes back, that is what he is into mental straying, who has gone away from the truth. That's what today many pastors are, gone away from the truth. Not realizing what is the truth. Not understanding what is the truth. Not able to wake up what is the truth. They became 4106 because they loved 4105. Plenae they loved. They became the word called as plenae. Error. Decide of fraud. And dear brethren, <coughs> they end up in delusion. So the sinner from the error of his way, 
That is what the way he does, what he has learned, that is what he is learning now, the course of conduct. And the one who converted him, that is what the sinner from the error of his way, shall save Sozo to keep him safe and sound and to deliver from the penalties of the Lord's mastigas, discipline and punishment. And what does he do? He saves a soul. That is what the suke, the thinking of your soul, which is much needed for us. Though we have the indwelling spirit in us and the Holy Spirit of the Lord our God creates in us the new human spirit, yet if you don't have the soul being transformed through the process of teaching from Holy Spirit to your human spirit, in return a human spirit teaching to your soul, changing the facets from human viewpoint to divine viewpoint, then you are not able to really enjoy the true breath of life. So you shall save a soul, sozo of that life from where he the word called as ek out of the death thanatos the separation and this is the word dear brethren which we need to be very careful the miserable state of the wicked dead in the hell and this thanatos meant to say literally death so you save him from the death and shall hide you're not only saving him from the death which is nothing but the sin unto death but furthermore you are saving him to cover up the multitude which he is going to do if he doesn't be corrected if he doesn't be trained if he doesn't be taught what is the right way of the lord of a god that is plethos that is what a great number of the things what you have been there a multitude of again the greek word harmatia that is what the word to be called to miss the mark to understand the truth he becomes a sinner 268 which is devoted to sin because he hasn't been made to hide the multitude of missing the mark so dear brethren what james writes is for us the way the people are walking not able to understand the right word of the lord of our god if you have the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher use the scriptures for exhortation correction and to put them into right practice of the righteousness or training in the righteousness of the word of the lord of our god training them up in sound bible doctrine if they don't come to that remember people are dying sin unto death remember they will not be from the sins two double six because they love to be two six eight devoted to sin and they will not be saved from Thanatos. Is it needed for you? Lord of God gave this life to enjoy the true glory of Lord of Christ to be manifested to this people. Developing Scottish in your soul like Ananias and Sapphira, you want to die. Like Saul, you want to die. Sin unto death. Who went even to consult the necromancers. We have not called for that. There is no pleasure for his own father to discipline his son. If you have your child, he would rather spank him and get back again, not to put him to death, but get back into life. That's what our Lord of God does in love, in gracious love. To bring forth those blind and deaf men who have eyes and who have ears. To assemble themselves and to get back to reason with the word of the Lord of God and to put them to understand that we are the witnesses of the truth. Dear brethren, that's what he has reserved and kept for us. He has revealed the Nagav he has preserved and is now declaring it for us through his word because interpretation belongs to my Christ, not to us. And greater the time you spend on this earth not knowing to walk in the spirit of the Lord of a God, breath by breath, because you are a believer in Christ made pure and holy at the moment of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone. Greater the time you reject. Greater the time you love to seek lies rather than truth. Greater the time you want to be called as anathema. Rather than making every believer and call to a Lord of God. Maranatha anathema. Making and waiting for the presence of the Lord of God. You have been made yourself to be anathema. Cursed one. By not knowing the truth. And the truth, if it is not of Lord of a God, you will live for a lie, witnessing a lie rather than the truth. But our Lord of a God has given this great grace to witness the truth and not the lies. Dear brethren, the shepherds, when they come, when they count, when they recount you, making you disciples for the word. 
the land will be with righteousness prior to that land every believer who has been made in the image of the lord of a god in the terms pertaining to and after the image of the lord of a god you love to be the holiest one not just the righteous ones and being above raising your head above the enemies you love to trample satan under your feet at every breath Look and seek the things that pertaining to Yahweh, Elohim alone, dear brethren. If we have been risen with Christ, the annals are our life, the high calling of the Lord. First, edify and stand up in the work of the Lord of our God. Then we can pull as many as can who are going into hell from that burning fire, showing them Christ through a holy manner walk of life. And opening up our mouth as the oracles of the Lord being seasoned with the grace and the word of the Lord of God. That's what he says. Walk in wisdom towards them who are without. And how many days more you want to be in the terms pertaining to heretic denominations rather than the right word of the Lord of God to be inculcated in our pulpits. The exegeomai denominations. Dear brother, and think over these issues as we have many things to come and communicate. We shall come back and communicate tomorrow in the same divine presence of the Lord of our God for His glory. Which way you want to go, you decide. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. Inaudibly telling to Lord God the Father that I believe upon my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior. That is the moment itself, you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us so very simple. Believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest matter is to carry sotha and lagan, herald the word in season and out of season, because of the diamond from my witnesses, wherewith they have been called. The number one diamond from my witnesses in willing trinity, for out of the Bible in our hands. And number two diamond from my witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brethren, do not worry besides nature, the entire angelic will be witnesses. But what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of the Lord of our God, no matter however the chips may fall. Dear brethren, the revolution what we get by Christ our Lord of our God, who alone is the interpreter of the scriptures through the Holy Spirit of Christ. Being constantly in the fellowship of Him, not grieving and squelching, let us learn the word, because for His name alone is holy. 3741 who is pure from sin and we are 3742 delivered from sin think about these issues even as the word plane A 4105 and 4106 and to be delivered from such traps as well we are here to reprimand you in love so that you shall not perish in your own sins Come back to life, true life in Christ. Partake every day in the elements of the Lord of our God. Daily carry your cross and come to Christ to learn the word of the Lord of our God. Proverbs 8, 34 through 36. Those who stand in the doorpost to listen to the doctrine of the Lord of our God day by day. Those who love the word will love life. Those who love, those who hate the word, they love death. And what it is you want to spend your life till more on this earth. Think about this, issues, dear brethren, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Continuing what is truth in answering back Pontus Pilate unto the world. Infinitely divine Holy Father, as we are going to study these things, we are much thankful to the Lord for this message, so that, Father, we could be much thankful for the grace which have been bestowed upon us and trusting in us that we will be the communicators. Help us, O Lord, to faithfully prepare more and more for the glory. And see if there is an offensive in us, O Lord, lead us in the way of everlasting truth. And to them who could enlighten the Lord and understand, as much as we can teach them plainly, to realize the philos love over the agape love of your demands, and understand what it is to carry the cross every day and follow thy disciples. To love thee above than everything else on this earth. Number one priority for which cause we have been kept alive is to get renovation of our thinking only through the word. And if you don't do that, what is the point of being alive on this earth, O Lord? Let them learn this basic lesson in their life and come back to know what is the truth in Christ we enjoy every day. For we ask all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ.
to the sovereign Lord, the Lord might be glorified. May Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten us in this time. In Christ's name we pray, Father.